that we should be giving our women some alleviation. The reason we have so many disgruntled women is because we treat them that way that creates that atmosphere. So the food is important. Now, if you've got a woman that's cursing you while she's cooking your food, that's going to have an impact. You, get, you wonder why I have indigestion or, you know. She's saying, Allah, you guess that I'm So we have to eat good food. Now the meat, I'm going to mention something about meat because this is part of the secular world is to create, turn people into meat consumers because meat is very profitable and if you study the history of the western people, their history is a history of literally destroying sheep people for cattle. You can read that there's a book that I recommend for you to read called uh, Beyond Beef by Jeremy Rifkin which is a history of cattle. Now there is a hadith sahih that the Prophet said لحم البقر داء وألبانها الشفاء is the Sahih Hadith. The, the meat of the cow is a disease and the milk is a, is a healing. Now we know that uh, Ibrahim السلام, ate meat and he brought meat. He came with a, a good calf. And the meat is definitely, beef meat is permissible. But Eating beef meat continuously brings on many diseases. This is absolutely confirmed in medical science. They have no doubt about the deleterious impact of particularly beef meat, which is a, has a, a great deal of, uh, of fat, but it, it literally hardens the heart. Now there is a tradition from Sayyidina Ali saying, beware of much consumption of meat because it pulls rahmah out of the heart. And in one uh, tradition said, يُقَسِّيَ الْقَلْبِ It makes the hard heart. Now it literally does that physically. It, 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 it uh, destroys the elasticity of the heart. And oxygen does not get to the heart. So there's an impact. Now th there are only two hadiths in the Muwatta of Imam Madik de dealing with meat. Both of them are warning people about meat. And we know there's a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet praised meat, meat is Sayyid al-Ta'am, all these things. But the Prophet, according to Imam Al-Qurtubi, لم يعتمده ولم يبحث عنه إن وجده أكده He did not take it as his staple diet, nor did he seek it out. When he found it, he ate it. And they did not eat a lot of meat. And I contest anybody who has been born a Muslim, if your grandfather is still alive and they're not from a wealthy family, ask them how often they ate meat in the Muslim world. People literally, I know Yemenis who told me in Yemen, they had meat maybe once a month twice a month. Some people only on the Eid times. And then when they had meat, they just used to be literally hardly any sprinkled on the, the food. Now the other thing is traditionally the Muslims did not eat beef. It's not a traditional meat of the Muslims. The Muslims ate sheep. But the beef eaters, in fact they, the British have the, you know, the beef eater. That's literally a British uh, uh, in the army, right? They have the beef eaters. And literally these people force beef on people, longhorns. In, in America, they kill the buffalo to make way for the cows, for the cattle. They completely wiped out millions, over 25 million buffaloes were killed in order to destroy the, the economic basis of the Indian, the Native American nations. But they also fought and opposed the sheep farmers because sheep farmers are humble according to the, the, the tradition of the Prophet. The ones that follow sheep, they learn humility. This is a hadith. And that's why the, the, the Prophet said that there was never a Prophet except that he looked after sheep. Now beef creates arrogance. People that literally uh, raise beef can become arrogant. So the, this is an American thing is beef, Texas beef, steaks, all these things. But read that book. The other thing, they fill it with massive hormones and steroids and all of these things. So you're not, it's, it might be halal if it's sacrificed, but is it tayyib? And this is something you have to ask yourself. Halal and tayyiba. Eat halal and pure, tayyib. And that means pure in all of the, the aspects of it. And taba, one of the things of taba is to be good. Imam Malik says in the Muatta that Omar said, "Iyakum wal laham, fa inna lahu darawa ka darawa al khamar." Beware of meat because it has an addiction like the addiction of wine. 
People get addicted to it. And then people don't thank Allah. Meat is something that when you eat it, it should be a blessing and a gift that you say, Alhamdulillah. And you teach your children that. But if they get used to it every day, Ibn al-Had says, don't give your children good food every day with like uh, idam, what he called idam. Get them used to having food that's not always really tasty and all these things, so that they are, they are thankful and grateful and appreciate what they have. This is, this is tarbiyah of the Muslims. You can see this in our book. That's a book from the 5th century of Islam. So th this is important. Really, as food, of eating healthy food and raising our children on healthy food. And then the next thing that follows that is medicine, because there is a secularization of medicine as well. The medicine, the, the, you have the military industrial complex, you also have the medical industrial complex. Medicine is a massive industry, billions and billions of dollars. In the United States alone, over $500 billion a year. It's bigger than their war industry, you see. And they have ma massive conflicts of interest. What they do, much of the medicine that is used, and if there's any doctors in here, then without deference to you, because Muslim doctors should really question things and shouldn't just take all these things face value. We have a, a thib. We have a thib in Islamic tradition, which doesn't negate that you can progress and learn new things and all these things. But we should not take the theories of medicine as, as absolute fact. Because much of the medicine that exists now is based on maintenance of illness, of not getting people better, but of maintaining illness. So you end up, if you go to a doctor, they give you pills, before you know it, you're literally getting a, a pharmacy bill every month. And then these bills disturb your biochemical uh, balance in the body so much that you can't go off them, it becomes dangerous to stop taking the pills. Now. I'm not saying, some people need, I'm not saying give up all, if people are on medicine, I'm definitely not saying throw away your medicine. But what I'm saying is, if you do become ill, look at all the possible alternatives. Much of our illness is from the way we eat, because we don't exercise. If you look at Muslims, they look unhealthy. Seriously, they look unhealthy. The National Institute of Health in the United States, which is their, that's their icon, that's their major, it's like what they say, it's like Sahih al-Bukhari with us. They said 85% of the illness in the United States is directly related to diet and lack of exercise. But if you go to a doctor, he doesn't say eat well and exercise, he said take this pill. That's what he says. It's like a magic thing. You just take it and everything goes away. But if you go to a good doctor, he say, listen, you, first of all, you look like hell. You better do something about the, That's a good doctor. They say the friend is the one that makes you cry, not the one that makes you happy. A good doctor will tell you, what are you doing to yourself? How did you get in? Unfortunately, most of these doctors, they're out to here too. They, he just had his triple bypass. Really, he just had his triple bypass. And the psychiatrist, he's seeing a psychiatrist down the road. And his daughter's uh, taking drugs. Really. We, I mean, we have our own deen. Lakum deenukum waliya deen. So we, our deen is different, including our medicine, which doesn't mean we can't, can't learn. I'm not saying throw out all of Western medicine. But what I'm saying is Muslims should not be so naive to think that these people have our good interests in mind. Because the same companies that make those drugs and write the textbooks for these doctors that are studying them are selling drugs that have been outlawed in the United States in Muslim countries. Give it to the brown people. Who cares? They get cancer five years from now. This is a fact. And you have to understand how ruthless these people are because they don't care about you. The only person who care about you is your own self. Save yourselves and save your family. If we all took that ayah to heart, we wouldn't have any problems in the Muslim world. Anyway, uh, just some thoughts <laughs> to think about. You know, but really, uh, we're, we're in a very desperate condition. The, uh, the secularism has had a massive impact on the Muslims. And we have to get back to our world view. Really, we have to look and analyze the Quran and study it and look what it considers knowledge, ilm. What it considers knowledge. Knowledge is not science. 